Hey there, welcome back to the Houdini for MoGraph tutorial series. Today we'll be learning how to add a little extra jiggle to your animations, setting minimal keyframes. To do this, we'll be diving into something called chops, channel operators, to mess with the spring node. So let's get started. We're first going to create a little character to apply our animation onto. So drop down a tube, right click the height, copy parameter, and then go to the center and paste relative reference and then divide by two. This will make it so that the character stays on the center grid as we adjust the height, which I'm just going to put at two. And change the type to polygon and check on end caps and turn up the rows and columns a bit. To make our rounded top, create a sphere, paste relative reference into the center since it still has the height of the tube copied, and then set the type to polygon mesh. Then copy link the columns from the tube to the sphere to make sure that they are the same. So create a Boolean node to combine them and set the operation to union. This will merge the two, but delete the polygons in the middle and make it hollow. I'm going to drop a fuse node for good practice to combine any overlapping points. Now I'll make another sphere set to polygon mesh and adjust the size to get a beady look for the eyes. Make a transform node and move it up to the height that you want. And then use a second transform node to rotate it to one side. Create a copy transform then copy the rotation value that we set here in the first transform and paste expression into the y value multiplied by minus 2. This will let you adjust the one value here on the rotation transform to move both eyes at the same time to an equidistance from the center. Merge those together and we've got our character built, so let's start animating it. I'm going to use a bend deformer since it gives us some nice controls already set up. So drop that down and change the capture direction to 1 in the Y and 0 in the Z. Then set the length to something around 3. And make sure auto keys is checked on because we're going to start animating. Change the up vector to the Z axis and bend your character forward. I'll click on the bend values to create the first keyframe and go a few frames forward and set it to overshoot a little past straight, just like that. And then go a few more frames and set it to zero. Now this might not look like the best animation, but it's good for what we'll be doing. I'm also gonna check on this length scale and preserve volume here. Then repeat the same idea, having it start squished out and then stretch out as it comes up, and then fall back to one. OK, perfect. Now we're going to smooth out this animation using chops to get our nice jiggly animation. I'll start by creating a null and naming it in underscore body in all caps to make it easier to find later. Create a chop network and dive inside. The three nodes that we need are geometry, spring, and output wired in that order. Set the out flag on the output node by clicking here. And in the geometry parameters, change the method to animated and then find that in node we created above by typing dot dot slash dot dot slash in and then you could just click on that. Come back up to the SOP level and make a channel node. Again, change the method to animated now look for that output chop in the chop net and select that. Put the display flag here and hit play. And you'll see we've got like a nice spring setup just coming from that really simple animation we did. Uh, it's, it's a bit more wiggly than I like, so I'm going to dive back into the chop and go to that spring node and then just crank up the dampening constant. While you're here, definitely take the time to mess around with these other values so you can, you can learn how to control them and get different looks in the future. But there you have it, that's our base animation. Now I'm gonna walk you through how to make the delayed copies with some extra spring up motion. 
Start with a circle set to polygon type and CX plane with division set to the amount of copies you want. I'm going to have it at six. To have them go in a circle, use the UV texture node set to rows and columns and set to points to measure the outline. Drop an add node and check delete geometry but keep points since we don't actually need the geo. Make a point fop node and head inside. To move these down, create a constant setting the Y to about minus five. Add that position and wire that out to the out position and that pushes them all down. Now we want to blend them up so we're going to wire in a mix node and add the original position to input 2. Take the frame global and create a fit node setting the source min to the start of your timeline and the source max to about 15 frames later and then wire that into the mix here. You'll see that they all move up at the same time, which isn't really what we want. So let's use the UV attribute that we set up, make a vector to float, and fit the first value from zero to the longest delay that you want, which I'm just going to have at minus 30. If you add that to the frame before the fit, we've got that nice delay now. We want this to have some of that nice smooth spring motion. And we'll do the same chop setup we did for the character. So come out, create a null named in underscore points, and make a second chop net. Geometry, spring, and output nodes. Find our null, change this to animated. Come back out and create a channel node find the output in the new chop net and switch this to animated and there we go I'm just gonna adjust the spring a little and perfect now create a copy stamp node and wire in our characters to the points we're going to be using the copy stamp node since we'll need to set up a delay attribute in a second. So I head back up to the point fop that we set the ring delay in and make a bind export node to create an attribute called offset. In the copy stamp node, check on stamp inputs. Create a variable called offset and set the value to at offset. Now make a time shift node after the character and click on the frame to see the expression. And now we want to add the offset value to the current frame since it's using negative values. Now we'll type plus stamp parentheses quotation marks dot dot slash copy to quotation marks comma quotation marks offset quotes comma zero and parentheses to access that attribute. And there we have it, our little character growing out of the ground. You can find the project files containing a little bit of extra details to download on our site. And until next time.